The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I'm here today with another Canola School episode and I have here with me Jack Payne who is with South Country Co-op. Now we are here today because you know we, we across the prairies have had extreme drought, extreme differences. I mean, Manitoba seen a lot of moisture last year. So it's it's got many asking as they're headed out into the field, what does that moisture actually look like? So. How do producers go about fi figuring that out? Well, that's really good, Kara, because you know I've been watching um, the discussions on, on on social media, and you know um, you know some of the maps that have come out talking about we're still in dry conditions. You know some of the soil moisture conditions are still not great. People are going, well, we had snowpack. Uh, some people have got sloughs. They're pumping water off of some fields. They're going, so you know where where are we at? So really, what we need to do is do an assessment to see. How much moisture do we actually have now in the soil? Because the snow is gone now. So what did that translate into? You know, way back a number of years ago, uh, Dr. Paul Brown on Montana developed what they call the, the Brown Moisture Pro. Basically, it's a steel rod. You weld a ball bearing onto the end of it. Some people would put a wood bit on there just so that they could do some soil sampling. But the intent of the Brown probe was basically you take this probe, you push it into the ground, it'll penetrate through moist soil and stops when you hit dry soil. So basically what you're doing is you're measuring the depth of, of moist soil. Now in the, the spring, um, that may not always be a, a true reading because you may still have frost farther down. So when the probe stops, you may have encountered frost. Maybe it's not dry soil. So it does have its limitations, but you know, basically we, the, we take the brown probe, we lean on it, we push it in, I don't know if you can see that or not, but basically they, they, they put a notch in here, that's a foot. So basically uh, the brown probe is telling us we've got a foot of moist soil. Now, moist soil, what's that mean? What, what is moist soil? So I like to go um, a little bit deeper and having worked with irrigation, I like to get a little bit better handle on what we mean by moist soil. So one of the things you gotta look at when you're looking at soil moisture um, is the soil texture. So a sandy soil is not going to hold as much water as does a clay or clay loam soil. If you've got two feet of moist sand, you've got about three inches of plant available water. If you've got two feet of a clay soil, you've got five inches of plant available water. So you can see the soil texture and the soil type determines what I call the drinking glass, the size of the glass. You've got a bigger glass on a, on a clay soil versus a sandy soil. So that, that's one parameter, is, is the soil texture. The other thing though is, that's at field capacity. That's one and a half inches or two and a half inches when the soil is fully uh, charged, the maximum amount of water it can hold against gravity. Well, sometimes we're not near field capacity, so we need to determine where are we at in terms of percent of field capacity. So this then, we go to another tool that I use and for those of you from irrigation areas, quite familiar with the Eichel Camp or the Dutch Auger. Um, it's a great tool. Both of these actually stay in my truck all summer long because, again, I'm a bit of a soils geek. And so basically I'm always probing and digging and taking samples. But the auger is great because it allows you to basically cut through samples and you get uh, some soil that you can actually hand texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Take our auger, and we're going to core it down a little bit. And so we're going to be looking at our top, our top six inches. So we can see, actually already, uh, in this case, we've, we've got good moisture here. So what we're going to do is we're going to push out some of the soil. And I'll just walk you through how to do some quick assessments as to, you know, estimating how much soil moisture you've got. Now this soil is alone. It's a, it's a good loam soil. So it would probably hold two, 2.1, two inches of, of plant available water per foot. So the first thing you do is you take your soil and you're gonna squeeze it. And you're gonna squeeze it hard and then you're gonna let it go. Now, what I'm looking for 
is does it form a ball? Well, absolutely it does. It forms a good firm ball. The other thing I do is how firm is it? And again, I can press on this and it still stays together. So by the fact that it's formed a ball like this, that's at 50% of field capacity. So with this loam at this, I know that we already have probably an inch of available plant water. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to work this and, and get a handle. Is it, is it really plasticy? No, it's not like plastic. It's not like putty. And the other thing you're going to try and do is, can I make a ribbon? Will it ribbon? Well, it makes a weak ribbon, if you can see. It's not... A good ribbon would be, you know, an inch, inch and a half long and would start to curl around. But it does make a weak ribbon. If it makes a ribbon, even a weak ribbon, it's going to be between 50 to 75 percent of field capacity. Now this isn't a real good ribbon, so just with experience I'm going to say this is probably around 65 percent of field capacity. So uh, we don't have the, the game, the, the, the soil isn't fully charged, we are probably about 65 percent of field capacity. Okay, that's top six inches. Let's go down, and of course I hit a rock. That's the other great thing about these, you can always find rocks. Again, we've got pretty good soil moisture because again, it's hard to force this out of the auger. And again, yeah, I've got a pretty firm ball, so I'm at, I know I'm at least 50% of field capacity. And I can get a weak, a very weak ribbon. It's not great, but I can get it to ribbon. So again, this is probably around 65% of field capacity. If it was fully saturated, if we were at 100% of field capacity or higher, this would be virtually mud. It would be basically, so when I squeeze it, you know, I would have a muddy imprint on my hand. So that would be, you know, 100% or more. So. We're probably still sitting around 65%. So at 14 inches, there's essentially no moisture left here. So, um, so what have we got here? All right. So what we've got is we've probably on we've we've got a loam soil which would hold about two inches of plant available water at field capacity at 100%. We are at 65%. So what are we? about an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters of plant available water. So um, we're not, we, so we've got moist soil, but it's not fully, fully charged. Um, the other thing I guess I would look at again is where are we at in terms of where that moisture starts. And if we look, we've actually got moisture close to the surface. If you look right in here, we've got yeah, we've got pretty good moisture at the, at the, at the surface. So I, I guess my, what I'd look at here, I guess, in this particular field is if we're planting canola here, we don't have to go deep. We don't have to go much more than an inch because we are we do have moisture. We do have good moisture to start. So if we've got good on-row packing, uh, the other thing is we've still got standing stubble, which is great because, you know, that effect influences that microclimate. It's going to help, you know, prevent some of the uh, drying effects of the wind and whatever. So, in this situation with this field, um, we've got a good start. We, we've got some cautious optimism. We've got good moisture close to the surface. If we seed half an inch to an inch deep, we'll get the seed into moisture. Um, it, it will germinate, um, but we're going to need timely rains. That's the big thing for this crop, because we're, there is no subsurface moisture here below below a, a foot. So this area, we've got good moisture to start, but we're going to need some timely rains.